So as astronomers, we often get asked what we see when we look up at the sky. Let me ask you a question. Could you identify every star in the night sky? Could you identify even a few stars or objects in the night sky? In this section, we're going to look at the many ways humans have stargazed over the history of humans. Uh, now, the techniques they have used, and we're also going to take a bit of a look at what we've actually been able to see. So we're going to start off by looking at the night sky with our naked eye. Um, so everything that we've already discussed so far in this course um, comes from observations made by Indigenous peoples um, over thousands of years just using their own eyesight. Um, and on a good clear night with no moon or light pollution around, the human eye is able to detect anywhere from about 2,500 to 4,500 stars in the night sky. That's depending on which hemisphere you're in um, and also on the, the strength of your own eyesight. Um, but even if we can see stars, it doesn't necessarily mean that we know what we're looking at. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I want to tell you about a waterman, lawman, a traditional owner, Bill Harney. Now, he has been recorded as knowing every visible star in the night sky. But more than this, he has actually built up an incredible intuition for those individual stars um, and their motions across the sky. Now, as remarked by CSIRO astronomer Ray Norris, to name most of the 3,000 stars visible to the naked eye is a memory feat that rivals winners of the World Memory Championships. And it is exactly for this reason why Indigenous peoples have been known in, and recognised internationally as the first astronomers. Now it's really easy to get overwhelmed by the vastness of the night sky. And so one of the best ways to start stargazing is to start by looking and trying to identify particular constellations or groups of stars. The star signs are a great place to start with this. And then you can build up your familiar, familiarity with the night sky, but also the different uh, groups of stars that are up there. And once the night sky has become a bit more familiar to you, you might be interested in obtaining uh, something to aid your observations, such as binoculars um, or even your own small telescope, um, which will allow you to zoom into the sky and to view objects with a much greater clarity than what you could do with the naked eye. Um, but for us scientists, it's not always enough to just zoom in on objects. Uh, sometimes we actually want to see the things that can't be seen with the human eye and we're going to look at some of those instruments uh, as well. Yeah, so what we mean by this is that there is a whole spectrum of light that is not visible to our mere mortal eyes. In fact, our eyes can only see less than 1%, about 0.0035% of the actual light that is, exists in this world or in this universe. So to the rest of, um, to see the rest of that light, the other, you know, 99% of light that's out there, we need to use specialized equipment. For example, I've mentioned multiple times now, I'm a radio astronomer, and that means that I look at light specifically in this radio frequency. But there is becoming this huge wave of uh, multi-wavelength astronomy now. We're seeing uh, work being done that doesn't just involve one type of wavelength, but it actually involves a whole array of wavelengths. So we can take these images as an example of that. Um, so they've been constructed using NASA's Chandra X-ray telescope but also using optical and radio wavelengths incorporated as well, mm -hmm. allowing us to see the full extent of these images and objects within them. Yeah, and they make really beautiful images. 
So here is another example. On the left, we have an image that was taken with the Hubble uh, spacecraft. Now, the Hubble spacecraft, it was a purely optical instrument. Uh, now, when we compare this to the image on the right, this is taken using the, the very new James Webb telescope, which actually combines optical wavelengths with infrared wavelengths, combining to give us a much more complete picture. So in the coming lectures, we will look at some of the different types of telescopes and explore the variety of objects we can see.